If you are dealing with a narcissist, most of the experts will tell you to go no contact with them, and I'm actually one of those people. When at all possible, you need to go no contact. This is for your own mental health and your future, but also for your children and other family members that may be involved in your situation with a narcissist. However, there are some cases where you simply can't go no contact. So examples of this are if you're in court with a narcissist, if you have children and you are co-parenting uh, through court orders with the narcissist, if you live with a narcissist and you're still planning your escape, you obviously can't go no contact then. And there are some cases where you should not go no contact with a narcissist because it will hurt your overall goals. So first of all, I just want to explain that low contact is simply referring to the amount of contact that you have with a narcissist. I have explained this in my videos before, but this is not just when you physically or verbally interact with a narcissist. You can be low contact in those areas. So for example, the amount of conversations that you are having with them or the amount of time that you're physically around them can be low but more importantly, the amount of contact that you have with them in your thoughts. And by this, I mean the amount of contact that you have with them mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So no contact is means just that. No contact verbally, you've blocked them on all social media platforms, and this means you don't unblock them to go stalk them and find out what they're doing and just check up on them. It means that you have blocked and deleted all of their contact information out of your phone and other devices, and you forever will not contact them again. I hope the difference between no contact and low contact is clear. I can have low contact in terms of my communication with a narcissist and in my uh, physical association with them, but I can also have no contact that with them in my thought life and in my emotional sphere. This happens when I have truly broken both the soul ties that I had with the narcissist and the spiritual covenants or contracts that I had with them as well. So let's dive in to some of the myths about low contact and how we can overcome them. Myth number one is that low contact is impossible. The narcissist always pulls you back into long, drawn out arguments, unnecessary meetups and events, and it derails the efforts that you have made in the past to go no contact or low contact. And one of the reasons that I'm choosing to put this as myth number one is because people in this category often don't understand that the narcissist will see your detachment as a challenge. You must expect that the narcissist will try to wrangle you back into a place where they are in control of you. This behavior from the narcissist should be expected when you are putting your low contact plan into place. So instead of viewing it as, I've tried that before and it didn't work for me, so now I just have to go along with whatever the narcissist says, I want you to really look and see if your approach to going low contact was a sound plan to begin with. Because the narcissist will continue to do what a narcissist always does, regardless of what you do, then you are the one who needs to develop strength and strategy in your plan to go low contact. Myth number two is that it's easier to allow the narcissist to determine the state of the relationship. So in other words, when they go no contact and ghost you, then that's fine with you. And when it's the love bombing stage, then you try to use that to get certain things and to progress your case and hope to prolong that stage of the abuse cycle. When it's the devaluation or discard phase, you try to speed that up so that they can get out of that phase and leave you alone more quickly. This leaves you in a position where you are powerless to determine how you are going to feel emotionally each day, how you will move forward in terms of other connections that you want to be making in your own personal goals, and not to mention the fact that you are demonstrating to your children on how they should be interacting with toxic people. Especially when the narcissist is a co-parent in this situation, you need to empower your children. They must learn that they are good enough and that they are worthy regardless of what the narcissist or any other person says about them. No one else's opinion matters and nothing that anybody says can diminish the truth that they are enough and that they are worthy. If you need help with this and if you are truly ready to heal from your narcissistic abuse and to get a plan together to reset your emotional relationship with yourself, your children, and your future, then text DETOX to 512-677-9322 and see if you qualify to join my narcissistic detox intensive. Myth number three is that any time is the right time to establish low contact with a narcissist. 
Two things about this myth. First of all, if you are already no contact and you decide to move from no contact into low contact because you are anxious or you are lonely or you are questioning whether or not you are the narcissist yourself or if you actually made the wrong decision about going no contact with the narcissist, if you're questioning whether or not you will ever find somebody again, or if you should just stick with quite literally the devil you know, this is never the right time to establish low contact. Once again, no contact contact is ultimately the goal if possible. And again, there will be situations where you can never go no contact and that's okay. However, if you are able to go no contact and you have, you need to stay no contact. The second situation that it is not okay to establish low contact is when you don't have a plan and you are doing low contact to somehow get back at the narcissist. You need to have a strategy when you go low contact, not only to maintain low contact, because like I said in myth number one, the narcissist is absolutely gonna see this as a challenge and they will definitely want to bring you back under control where you belong. So you need to have a plan on what to do when the narcissist ups their antics because you have gone low contact. You also need to know why you are going low contact. If you don't have a very clear vision for why you are doing this, it will be very easy to allow feelings of anger, frustration, and even rage to flare up in the middle of going low contact. And this can not only damage your position right then and there, but it can also inhibit you from going low contact when you have an actual plan together. So think long term. When you are planning to go low contact, what you wanna do is focus on the end result. What are you hoping to get by establishing low contact? And even before that, what are the ultimate goals that you want in life? If you are in court with a narcissist, one of the reasons that you would go low contact is to show the judge that there is so much difference between you and the narcissist that your behaviors and positions are easily identified by not only the judge, but every other third party that you interact with while you are in court. Another reason that you would go low contact is because your healing is by far the most important part of not only your case in court, but also your life. You should not spend the rest of your life in court with the narcissist. Your healing will speed up not only your time in court, but how quickly you rebound after that season of life is done. You want to have a very clear plan on how to go low contact, how to keep low contact, and assess how your current amount of contact is serving or hurting you. Like I said, if you are serious about getting help with this, please text Detox to 512-677-9322 and I will personally see if you qualify to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. This brings me to myth number four, which is that there is a right amount or a set standard amount of low contact to have with a narcissist. It's not true. Everybody's situation is different. So you have permission to set a standard for yourself and then adjust after you have collected data and after you have seen how that amount of low contact has actually impacted your life and your situation. Maybe your idea of low contact is actually way too much contact with the narcissist. And maybe your version of low contact was too close to no contact, which ends up hurting your situation in court or co-parenting in general with the narcissist. Give yourself permission to make a decision right now, but also put in a way to evaluate if what you are doing is working. I generally say that after about three weeks, after implementing low contact, you should have a review session with yourself to see how your current strategy has been helping or has been hurting you. It's okay to change your mind and to change your approach. I hope this video has helped you, and if you need some more help understanding your motivation when it comes to what you can or cannot do with your relationship with a narcissist, I want you to check out this video to get your questions answered.